And now, a minute from our conservation partner, the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. My name is Joellen Wilson. I'm the Juvenile Tarpon Habitat Program Manager for Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. Through Bonefish and Tarpon Trust's tarpon genetic research, we realized that Atlantic tarpon are one large population that are all genetically similar. When it comes to managing a species that's so wide geographically, it's really important that we manage at the local level, the state level, and the federal level. From what we know about tarpon spawning, we know that they spawn offshore because they go to deep depths, and this is pretty common through other fishes. Tarpon spawn in the summers in Florida, about May through July during the full and new moons. But in other places, especially once they get more north in the northern Gulf and then also up through South Carolina, they're probably spawning much later in the summer. Tarpon broadcast spawn, which means they basically release their genetic material out into the water, um, and that's where the eggs fertilize and hatch. Once the eggs fertilize and hatch, they start the larval period and they look like a pretty small, clear worm. And especially in the Gulf, you know, they're 80 to 100 miles offshore. If larvae are lucky enough to survive and make it to these inshore coastal waters, then they start searching out these calm back bay areas before they can metamorphose into the juveniles. These backwater areas are typically low in dissolved oxygen, which acts as somewhat of a refuge for tarpon. Tarpon, especially juvenile tarpon, but also all tarpon, have the ability to come to the surface and take oxygen from the air, but they don't need it in the water. These low oxygen backwater habitats exclude other big fish like redfish, jacks, and ladyfish from being able to, to eat the juvenile tarpon. As the juvenile tarpon grow in these habitats, they eventually migrate and they immigrate out of these habitats and move on to the next phase, which we call the subadult tarpon. The farther inland that we find these nursery habitats, these sanctuaries for the juvenile tarpon, the closer that they are to humans. The more likely they're impacted by nutrient runoff, contaminants, and mostly development. This is why Bonefish and Tarpon Trust has made identification, protection, and also restoration of juvenile nursery habitats so important. Once a juvenile nursery habitat is lost, it reduces the overall size for future populations. So less habitat means fewer fish for our children and our children's children. To learn more and to make your voice heard, visit BTT.org.